Awesome. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome everybody to Faith Faith Tech Connections. Today we're going to be having you all share your strategies for 2022. Look, Happy New Year, right? We're still saying Happy New Year. It's like halfway through the month of January. Can you believe it in 2022? Time has gone by so, so fast. My name is Aretha Simons. I'm the webinar producer here at TechSoup. And for those of you who are new here, everybody is, um, I would like for you to stay on mute and not on mute. On our webinars, you're on mute, but the Zoom webinar where we can see your face, you are um, able to unmute yourself and talk and chat with each other and ask questions. But we would prefer that you use the little reaction button down at the bottom of your screen and it gives you the option to raise your hand or you can just like wave like this, like I have something to say. I get that sometimes too. So feel free to stop me at any time. Um, but today it's all about you. I don't do a lot of talking on these. It's, it's all about you sharing your ideas. I do have a couple announcements. Um, I mentioned earlier, if you're having a conference this year, if your organization is having any type of conference where you want someone from TechSoup to come and share, you know, how technology can help their organization or talk about anything, IT, software, customer, uh, relationship management, anything, grant writing, let us know. Um, Shannon Cherry is your contact for our events. Or you can email me at asimons at TechSoup if you um, cannot reach Shannon. We would love you to be a feature speaker because I want you all to come on and start presenting because I know you have lots of things to share within your community, what's going on, only about nonprofit things, right? You know, so if you have a specialty that you, you started a nonprofit and it's going really, really well, like we had a gentleman on that's been in, in the nonprofit for like 35 years. He had a lot to share. He gave us a new word that I have never heard of. It was called nonprofit starvation cycle. So Google that word, nonprofit starvation cycle. And it just blew my mind. Like I never heard of the term and it was just amazing the things that I learned. So I'm gonna invite him back. But today again, it's all about you, leaders sharing your topic. So I'm going to let you have the floor and I'm gonna start out with saying again, welcome to everybody. And one thing that I learned last week besides the nonprofit starvation cycle is that nonprofits are getting funding to do what they need to do. So would you share with us um, what you have planned, your strategy to raise funds? Um, it could be to increase or decrease um, your personnel, whatever you wanna share, because we really do learn from each other. So who's first? Oh, now y'all, I know half of y'all are pastors, so I know y'all, y'all do be quiet all the time, so. <laughs> um, go ahead, Mo, I'm, I'm going to pick on you because you asked me about that one question, and by the way, um, the question you asked me, I've been doing 501c3s for 24 years, so I, I automatically knew what you were talking about, so um, the question you asked me earlier, I want everybody to hear that because that may be a situation with more people. Okay, did you want me to restate that question or do mm -hmm. you want me to answer your question about raising funds? Oh, both. Hey, that would be great, both of them. Oh, okay. Well, my question just was, uh, I don't know if any of you are in the situation, but we recently uh, had a, a major pivot. So we kept the same EIN and there's some of the same, I don't know if infrastructure is the right word, but there's some of the same uh, personnel supporting mainly volunteers and contractors, but by and large, the all the old board gone, new board in, old ED, and founder gone, new ED, which is myself in, uh, new vision, new bylaws, but we kept the same EIN, changed the name. So I went on to TechSoup to try to get a new, uh, to get a subscription to QuickBooks in particular, because previous ED bought it years and years ago when it was still a, uh, I think it was a, a, the, she bought the non-online version, but in any case, it gave me an error code saying somebody from somebody with this EIN already purchased this and it gave a code for that type of product and it wouldn't let me purchase it. So I was just wondering how to kind of get around that because um, uh, just having a lot of challenges trying to get turnover with some of our accounts. And I think it would be best to just kind of start from scratch with a new, uh, a new QuickBooks uh, subscription. So that was that was that question. I'll pause. 
Okay, thank you for sharing that. And as I, I told Mo, um, I'm gonna have someone get into contact with him, but um, as I mentioned as well, you can change the name of the organization, but if the EIN is still attached to the organization, it's still the same organization. So I'm gonna have someone get in contact with him once he emailed me his contact information. So share with me your other strategies, Mo. Well, yeah, and I'm probably like the worst and the best person to start off. I'm the worst because uh, I don't, I, I'm literally just starting. Like we were supposed to turn over in October and without giving you the story, it just, it got delayed and delayed. So I literally just kind of took over um, in the new year. Um, and maybe the best person, because now everybody else's stories are going to see, like, I'm setting the bar really low, folks. So whoever's next, I don't care how bad you think you got it. You're, you're going to be, you're going to be doing well. So um, the answer to your question is uh, sent over a or I sent out a transition letter. And right now, that's about it. I'm working hard to try to build relationships with partners, both folks who can bring themselves, you know, as facilitators for events. So we have an outdoor based ministry to veterans. So backpacking retreats, uh, hunting, fishing, and we're going to be hopefully adding marriage retreats and some other things to that this year. Um, so we got folks doing that, but also trying to develop partnerships with people as far as donors um, and not wanting to just reach out and that's, this is kind of new to me. So trying to build some relationships and see who's interested and then ask them if they'd be interested in having a conversation about our vision and our fundraising uh, or our financial goals. And most people say yes. So now I'm kind of in the next phase of following up saying, okay, you said yes. So now you know what the conversation is going to be about. Let's have that conversation. But um, I am really, I'm like five months behind the power curve. I still need to do all the typical things of, you know, uh, regular social media communication to build the relationships, emails, um, identifying, you know, key relationships, partnerships, and having conversations with those. And like many of you probably experienced, I am in that startup churn where I was, in fact, right before this, I was literally going through my spreadsheet. And I've got like, it feels like about 153 things to do. I'd say about 25 of them are all screaming urgent. And I don't have a team like I'm, I've been used to. I've retired after 28 years from the military. I'm used to having a team of people. And right now um, that team is pretty small and their time is limited. So um, I've said a lot, but mainly told you what I'm not doing. That's like a horrible answer. But like I said, I, I'm setting the bar low. No, Lots that of, was great. <laughs> No, that was great. And people need to hear that. People need to hear that they're not alone, that they're not the only one just starting out. So anybody have any feedback from Mo or any comments? I see Reverend Hall, I see your hand up. Thank you. Forgive my ignorance. What what, what does ERN, is it ERN stand for? No, it, it was EIN, Employee Identification e Number. Yeah. Say that again? Employee Identification Number, also your I tax exempt number. Got it. Thanks. Uh huh. Anybody else had um, comments or feedback from Mo? Or I see lots of people typing in the chat room. We're going through the same thing with outreach ministry, so we'll possibly encounter similar issues. That's what James said. Can I talk? Yeah, I I couldn't. Who is who is that? I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm Lee Hertig, and I've been running a nonprofit called Isaac for 15 years. I'm a former academician. I gave up my endowed chair position to run a nonprofit. So my learning curve was very high. But for Mo, I also amended the name when I became the second executive director, although I was a co-founder. And you wanna make sure that you are sending amendment letter to the state and IRS and you have to go through all of that. Otherwise, you're going to be getting the letter of uh, you're about to expire or you don't exist, your tax exemption status, all that nine yards, you have to make sure that you go through a checklist. If you're not a member of Cal nonprofit, I would highly recommend that they have a checklist and they're very helpful. Since this is faith-based conversation, I got two grants 
I got the highest grant in the last three years. So $1 million and another 110K. With those come a lot of work. So I'm HR, I'm internal bookkeeper, I'm a program developer, I'm running online cohort, developing a master class. Whew. So if you know of anybody in your circle who are looking for 10 hours a week, uh, internal bookkeeping, I have external bookkeeper, but I have to delegate, delegate, delegate. So need an admin assistant and uh, internal bookkeeper. And my question to you is how many, I'm based in LA, California, how many W9 can we issue? That's, that's a good question. I mean, W-9 is for your independent contractors, right? Right. I'm the only W-2. Even I became W-2 recently in the last three so years, two you, years. You can, you can issue as many as you need. I mean, whoever you're paying more than $600, they, right. need, to be, they need to have a 1099. So is it going to signal a red flag to IRS or California Board of Franchise? I think you are saying you are nodding. Can you? Uh, what's your I'm name? not nodding. No, is I somebody think. Somebody else I, nodding? Yeah, she is nodding. No, I okay. nodded because I'm in that position right now where I'm also asking the question. We've had a contractor for four years now, and nobody before me, I've been in this job about a year and a half, um, nobody before me ever filed a 1099 on her and they don't oh have a W-9 from her. And she sent me paperwork this week that is some form I've never ever heard of. And it's definitely not a W-9, it's an 8453. I'm like, oh, what a, do I do with 8453, this? can you hold it up? That sounds like a power of attorney form. Can you hold it up? No, What's it's the name? not What's the title? Attorney. What's the title? Oh, is it organization declaration and signature for electronic filing? Oh, for her. That's that's for you to file electronically and for her to file electronically, but she still needs a W-9 and you got to issue a 1099. I know, but if I issue a 1099, my understanding, which I just learned from TechSoup last week, is that we're subject to huge penalties because we haven't reported her before. So I'm I'm with um, I, the Isaac Group lady. I, I don't know what to do with that. Well, I think this, this, you're probably obligated to file to do it now. I would check, you know, with your accountant or your attorney. But I think that really, you know, you're just going to compound it. So you might get fined for the three years that they weren't submitted. But if you don't submit now and it ever comes back to haunt you, you'll get fined for even more years. And I don't think it's a huge fine. I don't know. Does anybody know what the fine is? I'll be based Last on $562 per incident if you're more than a year behind. Correct. Um, I think they give you grace. I had 199 my CPA didn't file for three years. And I finally caught up and uh, I locked out with uh, a board of franchise. She work with me. So uh, don't get overwhelmed. I would say you contact, get on the phone and negotiate. <laughs> Thank you, young lady. I, mm -hmm, I agree. Mm -hmm. Very good advice, you guys. Um, lots of conversation going on. Anybody else have anything you want to share? Any questions, comment, feedback? Because that was a great start and things that people need to think about. So thank you for sharing that, Young Lee. Um, I know that I get my first webinar. Um, <laughs> um, can't, for the, for, the, for the gentleman that was looking, I think he was asking about um, getting grants and things like that. Um, we have an annual toy run uh, I'm with a biker's church. 
um, <laughs> in Colorado Springs, the Bikers Church in Colorado Springs. And annually we have a toy run. And um, we've been successful in asking Walmart for money. Um, they have a grant program. And, you know, it's like, well, the worst that can happen is they say no. Um, but the other thing about that is that you're, you're actually going to be working with a local Walmart store. So you would identify which store you're asking. They're all given or allocated a certain amount of funds. And each store is uh, that they can use through the grant program. And we just ask every year. And we've been blessed that uh, we've been given money from Walmart every year to help with the administrative types of costs associated with a toy run <clears throat> uh, for the kids. And, you know, it never hurts to ask. The worst they can say is no. And uh, yes, that's the link. Um, they did change uh, this last year. There's a, a couple more hoops to go through. Um, you have to go through a, a grant. There's an actual uh, website or something that is monitoring all kinds of grant requests. So there may be other grants out there that are fairly easy to ask for. Um, and it's within your own local community to support what's going on in your community. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Awesome, thank you. And, and somebody put the link in there, this is awesome. Hi James, you can unmute yourself. Yeah. I just wanted to <clears throat> quickly comment on the uh, 1099s and what, can you still hear me? We can hear you, but you will okay. not. Yeah, we can see you okay. now. Okay, I was trying to figure out what happened. Um, <laughs> but with the 1099s, uh, because we're faith-based, uh, I would encourage you, the people that you do have on 1099s, uh, make sure you understand what that entails for them and explain that to them. And the reason I say that is because I actually came on board at our church and I worked technology. They asked me if I would work it for them and then they you know, gave me a stipend and did a 1099. Well, when I got ready to file taxes, I didn't know all these other things that were involved with that, how I had identified myself as a self-employed, you know, that causes me to file taxes differently, provide takeout for my own taxes. A lot of different things, you know, expenses that I wasn't tracking because like I said, the church just asked me to help. So I helped. But then when I got ready to file, I found out that all this stuff was involved in making sure, you know, so I actually ended up uh, having to pay fees and penalties because of things I didn't know needed to be done. Uh, and a lot of times, you know, people are coming, especially with ministries, they come to help because you say you need help. But then when they find out that they're in that situation, like I said, there's things that, uh, now I'm, I'm staff, so I can make sure people understand that. But it, that was a shock to me, finding out that I needed to do all of this stuff uh, and declare myself self-employed, you know, even though I was only working, you know, doing some contract type work for the ministry. So that's one of the, uh, the other thing, like I said, to make sure, because a lot of times people don't understand what that entails. So they may not even always look at that and then go back and find out, oh, well, I, you know, I should have filed this way. So like I said, I just, just would say that um, since we're talking about this, make sure that as the leaders, we understand what really is entailed in doing 1099s. You know, uh, in fact, my executive pastor just sent me this morning and asked me if we could automate it to W9s for our people, you know, so like I said, just, I would encourage, make sure you, uh, that we understand what being a 1099 contract for a faith-based ministry is, because like I said, a lot of times people are just saying, hey, I want to help out in the ministry, but you're paying them and then they find out later on that, oh, now that's something I have to actually file. 
and I have to claim this. And then, like I said, you know, I wasn't looking at, you know, expenses, you know, vehicle maintenance, travel times, you know, mileage. I wasn't looking at any of that stuff. So I ended up actually losing money by working for the ministry because I had to take all this stuff that I couldn't claim on my taxes because I didn't know that I needed to keep track of all that stuff. So I would just encourage, like I said, just make sure that as you're doing 1099s and bringing your W-9 employees on board, make sure that they also understand what is required of them. And that will help you because then if you have to go back and make these submissions, you know, for tax purposes, now you've also, there, there's less conflict and less problems for everybody. And like I said, I learned from personal experience that if nobody in the ministry knows what that really entails, we're going to be in trouble because we had 1099 people on board that, like I said, we didn't know we needed to do that. We just wanted to help out. So that, that that's my input, you know, make sure we Thank understand what that, that actually entails. Yeah, I think everybody was writing notes when you were speaking. So thank you for sharing that. Anyone else? Comments, questions, yeah, what are your strategies? I would like to make a comment. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, um, what the gentleman was saying is, it's important for the organization to reach out to SCORE and the SBDC office located in the area because they are actually there to actually help organization with all the issues that they're having. So that was one of the things that I was able to share with a lot of organizations. They have to go to either their economic development department, their chambers, and they will help them actually get the information that they need to run their organization. I don't want to see them learn on the job. <laughs> it's better to reach out and get a um, someone to help them who actually our funds, our tax period dollars go to help nonprofits. And I like to say a lot of nonprofits have not been getting a lot of help. Um, a lot of people consider them as non, um, non-businesses, but faith-based nonprofits is a business. It's just that we're doing the community service. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I'm going to put a link to our 1099 webinar um, from last week. So when you get a chance, um, you can watch that and you can go ahead and actually click on that link. It'll open up on another window. It will not close this Zoom window. And you're right. Um, SCORE is a great resource. Um, we also, you know, have other resources here. But SCORE, is, I volunteered for SCORE for five years. So I know the benefit of SCORE. Lots of free resources for you. Um, someone else was going to say something? Uh, yeah, my name is Bill Carroll, and I'm with a uh, small church in uh, in Birmingham, and we're getting ready to do a, uh, uh, they really haven't had an accounting system. I'm recently retired uh, and a disabled veteran, but uh, the uh, when I looked at uh, the QuickBooks, and you may not be the right person to ask, but when I looked at QuickBooks, my question was, uh, should I be look because I we have donors? Uh, should I be lo- be looking at uh, the QuickBooks desk or QuickBooks online? And if it's uh, the desktop QuickBooks, I think requires uh, or provides additional uh, benefit uh, in terms of issuing stuff uh, donations donation letters. But is that desktop, is that available for people who just have a laptop? Uh, Does it come with a CD or is that, does it come online? Can you get it online? The online version is, yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking at, I'm looking, I'm looking it up right now. Go ahead. That question, Aretha, because I just went through that thing and I'm in a very similar situation, Bill. I've just recently um, taken on the bookkeeping for our church. And there was actually a TechSoup, um, and there is a TechSoup video out there that you can look up. Uh, The answer to that question is desktop just means that it's going to reside on a single machine. It does not 
Um, I can you tell that I used to do? But you can download it online. <laughs> yes, you will download. Yeah. You'll download. Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. Um, but what that means is it's not available out there on the cloud. So it's going to reside on a single machine, or you can get uh, a three user license so that three separate users can also have it on, on their machines. The problem there is sharing the data that resides because it's going to reside physically on your machine. You're going to want to use the QuickBooks um, desktop premium, I believe it is, and then you'll select for nonprofits when you install it. I have to say through TechBooks, it was incredibly cheaper. Oh my word, saved our church so much money. Um, and so that's the way you wanna go is through TechSoup. Um, the, um, you're gonna wanna use that nonprofit flavor of QuickBooks desktop, Premier online, I mean, desktop. I'm bubbling my words here. That's um, okay. That's okay. <laughs> because it is set up for nonprofits. So, and it's set up so user friendly, and you set up your donors and you can set up funds, and you'll be able to actually generate out of that version of QuickBooks donor letters, the thank you letters. Um, you can't do that in online. There's not a flavor of online that is set up for nonprofits. Um, Thank you. Thank you, Beth. Yeah, yeah I, I watched you sharing that. Um, yeah, I, we have I watched broken in the, I watched the YouTube video, which was very helpful in outlining it, which is why I was asking the question because I didn't get I didn't hear that answer in the YouTube video. So mm. thanks, Mama. <laughs> that was awesome. Okay, we have broken and beautiful admin, and then Carol, you'll be next. Somebody else, Pastor John, you had your hand raised, right? Okay, well, you can still come after unbroken and beautiful. Go ahead, and then Carol after Pastor John. Okay, I guess I can put my hand down now, but a couple of <laughs> questions. So, we actually been around since 2014, but we just became a 501c3 in 2021. So the good news was, the good news is, we got a lot of staff already kind of built up. Um, but where we're getting into now is we're getting into housing. So we're starting to supply housing for the ladies when they get out of prison. So, and we've, since we got a group, we've been able to get some decent donations, but we're really going to have to get into grants, which is a totally new field for us. So I didn't know if you had any suggestions on how to get started with that. Um, I'm going to put a link in there in a moment to an organization that I know in Texas. Um, they were able to get some grants and actually got Junior Lee to build them a house from the ground up. They didn't have to pay for paint, nail, nothing. So I'm going to put her contact information in there and you can connect with her. Her name is Sandra Stanley in Fort Worth, Texas. So I'll put it in there in just a moment, okay? Okay. And anybody else can share anything that you know as well. Anybody having to share anything to share with him? I, no? okay, I then. do. Go ahead. This, this is Michelle from Beginning Experience. One thing, somebody mentioned this earlier. Um, I think it might have been Young Lee. When you do a grant, especially if you're a very small organization or if you're the only person who works in the office on a daily basis, be really strategic about applying for grants because if you get the grant, there is a ton of work that comes with it. So um, don't like apply for six grants and accept them because you know all at one time, unless you have somebody to help you manage the grants um, because the money coming in is nice, but the paperwork and the reputation that you could get if you don't uh, follow through is um, it's pretty onerous. And we've got we've got a couple people we we're putting on well one on salary one's going to be at ten ninety nine, uh, which does not include me. I do this full time, but I've I just do it as I'm actually run it. But and I do a lot of this stuff. But it's how much time does it take then? I mean, per grant is it significant or? I it's guess you're saying it is right. Grant. It's it's different for each grant. Some grants, um, if it's a government grant, you might apply for it this month. It may take them four months to send to 
send you a notice saying you get it. It may take you another 45 days for you to get your first check. So everyone's different. And then there's some grants. Well, remember, you can get grants from individuals, foundations, corporations. So there's different types of grants. It just depends. So some you can get, you know, 15 days, 30 days, six months, a year. It just depends. You have to read the, the criteria when you apply for the grant. And it'll tell you um, when the funding will come in. So I, I didn't want to forget about Pastor John. Mm -hmm. Go ahead with your question or comment, oh, Pastor John. Yeah, no, thank you so much. So, and I appreciate the forum. So, well, two things. One, I want to pivot away. I know we're talking about money, but just from just a share perspective. So I, I just recently here in New York, we had Hurricane Ida, which was fun. And we learned, I learned the hard way that uh, churches are considered critical when they need to be, but non-critical when it comes to SBA. So uh, we're critical when it came to make sure that people were vaccinated. And as a, you know, you might see my name, but I belong to the Church of God in Christ, which is a predominantly African-American church. And, you know, we were great when we needed to get somebody in office and we were great when we needed to get somebody our vaccines, but it was non-critical when it came to this storm. So because of that, we had to take an SBA loan and my building had been paid off for 50 years. And I wasn't exactly the most chipper guy to put that to the board, but just, just from a learning experience, it's, it's been a certainly a learning curve. You talk about grants, dealing with FBA and FEMA at the same time has been a blast. But it, you know, it's something I've called my, my congressman about and my senator because you know, they, they all referred me back to the Stafford Act saying that's just the way it is. Well, look, we're critical when you need us, but non-critical when it becomes to having to borrow. And you know, my teaching is, look, I don't want anybody to borrow. And here I'm going against everything I have just to put a 76, you know, a, a hundred year old building back together. And, but anyway, just for education purposes, FYI, uh, you're critical when you need to be. But the other thing is, Arita, that I wanted to talk to you about, and we will, we are going to have an event that I do want to talk to you about. Um, and I'll send you an email on that separately. Yeah, we are putting it together. Uh, so uh, we just started actually yesterday. So I will send you a follow-up email. The other thing I think for, for churches that I'm seeing and maybe faith-based organizations that I, we need more, I know you've got the, the, the on-demand on training, but where, we're, where I'm needing help is that we don't have, as, as the young lady was saying, we are the chief bottle washer, we're everything, right? But when it comes to doing social media and marketing, there's where we need more, we need more help. And I, and I don't know if, if TechSoup can bring more, because look, I've talked to ad agencies that can charge us anywhere to $3,000 a month just to run our SEO and SEM. I know there's the Google grant that, that's out there for 100,000, that's you know $10,000 a month. But I think the resources that we're seeing for small faith-based organizations that, that's a niche that we need is somebody to help us to do the, the, the social media posts, somebody to help us navigate those waters Arita, that doesn't cost us three grand a month to have an ad agency take it over because we don't have the bandwidth. And we don't, and, and you know what? We don't, there's messaging directly for Instagram. There's messaging for Twitter. There's messaging for Facebook. There's messaging for all these different criteria. And to be honest, you give me scripture and, and chapter, that's my job. That, that I can do really well, but now having to do all these other things and then learn how to do live stream, which we've had to do, I, I think if TechSoup can give us a little bit more intelligence or give us agencies that will work within that administrative fee guideline, um, I, I, that would be a tremendous uplift for us in, in, in what we do, because it would take something off our plate that we don't have to pay three grand a month to have somebody do. Wow. Thank you for saying that. I'm going to share this with um, Gail. Uh, I wish she was here. Normally she is, but I will definitely share this. I'm going to take your video and like, Gail, here you go. <laughs> so this is great. Thank I you. And this you, is what I we will need. give you my email and she can call me because this, yeah. this you know, I've been dealing with this for a year. And right. Aretha, it's hard to find an agency out there that's not, and they don't care if you're a nonprofit, for profit. They just. That's true. The fee. That's true. Yeah, that's true. And I'm not saying that TechSoup can do it, but maybe we can reach out to somebody, a tech company to say, hey, you know, this is what, you know, would you like to partner with us? So thank you for saying that. I put my email back there again. Please email me. Um, and quick question. Thank you so much for your comment. Yes. What can TechSoup do for small nonprofit faith-based? A lot of times because we are faith-based, we are not even eligible. And what can TechSoup do for us? 
Everything that we can do is on our website. We have over a hundred partners. You would have to go through and see what's the fit for you. I, I couldn't spend the time to say, we could do this, we could do that. Everything we could do is, is on our website. Yeah, so I would, I would um, you know, encourage you to take the time to go through the website and go through the links. Carol, you've been waiting for a while. Thank you so much. <laughs> go ahead with your question or comment. Carol Blaine. Okay, Carol, you're on mute if you're speaking. Okay, I'll go to Phoebe. Is that how you say it? You're on mute if you're speaking. Okay, you're on mute now. Go ahead. Yes, yes. We can okay. hear you. Um, I, I have a nonprofit and I try to reach you regarding the last um, webinar that we had because I was I'm in a starvation uh, stages of my nonprofit and I like to get some contact information from that last webinar that we had. Um, when you say you would like to get some confirmation and you said you reach out to me where? No, I'm no, no. Sorry, I, I, I send you an email. I was on the last webinar that we had. Um, and we had some people talking about starvation. Steve, Steve talked about starvation. Uh, I think starvation crisis or something like that, that nonprofit has. Oh, starvation cycle. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah, starva there we go. Starvation yeah. cycle. And that mm -hmm. that is where I am. And I okay. really need to speak with him. Um. And I did look at some of the link, um, the, the, okay. the websites. And if you could give, I will send you an email now that I have your email address from today. Because when okay. you send out this slide, we don't have the chat. To right, right. Yes, yes, yes. And, and what I'm going to have to do is to go back and look for Steve's name so I can get his email. And then I'll email him your information. How about that? That will work. Okay. And yes, because right, that, that is exactly where I am. We have been around for, God, 20 some more years. I spend my life trying to make changes in mm -hmm. our world. And after, uh, during the COVID, we, you know, we stopped doing our events and started um, doing fireworks. And then since mm -hmm. the firework, I got carjacked. And now I have to work on ways to make money. So I'm looking into grants as well. Okay, I will definitely share it with you. Thank you for um, bringing that out. Okay. Um, Carol, are you able to unmute yourself now? Carol? Okay, we'll go to um, Lisa. And then James, I see you. Hi. Hi. Um, I run a, um, a nonprofit out of Charlotte, North Carolina, and we buy wheelchair vans for um, disabled children. And I could use some legal assistance. And I'm wondering if TechSoup has any kind of programs or something that you could offer um, reduced fees, uh, because I'm, I'm hearing when I'm trying to find a, a lawyer to help with some paperwork, you know, just to make sure that we're doing everything liability wise, you know, on these wheelchair vans, um, that they're asking for, you know, $500 for 30 minutes, um, which is just crazy. And we can't afford that. So how can I get some legal advice at a reduced or, or free would be nice too. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure. I, I know we don't have a tech company that offers that. Um, can anybody put any, um, connections in the chat room that she may be able to be able to speak with someone pro bono or something like that feel free to share in the chat room but our focus is really technology um, hardware and software that nonprofits need to advance their mission um, but if I hear of anything like after this is somebody email me I will definitely contact you I will go back to this look up your name look up your email and contact you great thank you you're welcome okay James and then Gloria and then Philip yeah, actually, I was just going to comment. I think it was Pastor John uh, when he was talking about the tech support uh, within area. Uh, and what I was going to comment is uh, what we did in our area 
uh, we actually have a ministerial association for our county. And within the association, uh, the different pastors talked uh, and got with their tech people. <clears throat> so within our within the organization, we actually have a group uh, of men and women from different churches and ministries uh, that we've come together. Uh, and we're not so much subject matter experts, but you know, I know how to do some things with live streaming and broadcasting. I have some, we have some people who know how to do the websites, the, the social media. And so actually what we did was within the association, we formed a group of tech support people. So when a church contacts the administrator or association and says, hey, uh, we're trying to do this. We're, we're just starting to do broadcasts. I, I don't know what kind of cameras I need to get. Uh, you know, How do we get this done? Then we reach out within that, that smaller group within the community and we actually go to each other's church and we actually help set up. So instead of them having to try to contact and contract somebody uh, to come in and do some of that stuff, we actually, uh, the churches have actually banded together uh, to pool our knowledge. Let me ask you this, James, why don't you do a demonstration here, create a list, or you be one of our featured speakers and talk about the things you guys use, how you stream, how you do this, and do, do a webinar, email me and let's connect so we can put this out there. I'm serious, so you can share with everybody because everybody's not streaming. So please email me and let, let's connect on that. Okay. All right, all, all right. right, thank you. Gloria, yeah. go ahead with your question or comment. If you're- Did I if you, can you hear me? Yes, yes okay. ma'am. Um, I came in late, so I might've missed this. But uh, TechSoup has been really wonderful in helping to connect to um, the um, uh, grants uh, as far as uh, the cost of getting into like a grant library with, <clears throat> for instance, $75 a year with Grant Station. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. And I think that's one of your partners and it's well yes. worth it. And it's pretty simple to use. And you can go under the category of either religion or faith-based or whatever you type in church and, and then find some, but just a word to the wise that local grants uh, uh, wipes out your competition more than uh, when you go regionally or national or of course, international. So that's something to to look at if, if there's something being offered locally as opposed to regionally or nationally. And unfortunately, I have to jump off uh, at this point. But thank you so much. This has been great. Will there be a recording I can tap into and hear yeah. the remainder? Yes, Gloria, thank you for sharing that. We'll send the recording sure. out in, in about 48 hours. Thank you for what you just shared. Grant Station is doing two webinars next month, and we have the Grant Station special coming up February 15th and 16th, where you only pay $99 to become a member. It's for a year to become a member of Grant Station, and they, are the, they have databases of federal, um, local, and foundation grants. Um, Philip, go ahead, unmute yourself. We you already unmuted. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, I, I just want to um, let everyone know that um, there is a organization that specializes in technology support for nonprofits, and it's called, and you may have heard this, techimpact.org, and that was one of the programs that I attended, and they actually help nonprofits, and they train the kids to support nonprofits, so techimpact.org is a Microsoft partner, and um, they're there to help nonprofits. And Sharon, they're one of our partners too. So you can um, look in the search box and type in Tech Impact. So thank you for sharing that. Go ahead, um, Robert, you were next. I uh, just want to say thank you for all that you do at uh, TechSuit there. And uh, you were talking about that uh, you do uh, speaking at uh, uh, events and things. Do you do any of that by Zoom to say, our, if we want to come, want you to come to our organization, would you do that? 
Yes, we would love to do it by Zoom. <laughs> okay. And uh, yeah. just wanted to answer that lady. I believe her name was Lisa. I don't see that she's uh, with us anymore. But uh, one way to get lawyers on board is uh, sell that uh, organization to them and just say, you know, uh, pro bono work is uh, a good way to get your name out in, the org out in the community as a way of showing how you support this work as well. And uh, so it would be a good way for them to give back into their community by showing what they do as well. I like that. I hope y'all wrote that down. <laughs> how would we get in touch with TechSoup uh, about uh, doing some trainings and things you can um email i'm going to put this in the chat room shannon cherry or myself i'm with the s cherry at tech soup if you email me i'll forward it to shannon or me a simons at techsoup.org for those of you who can't hear i've been typing in the chat room and some some somebody says they cannot hear because of their device so s cherry like a cherry on ice cream at techsoup.org or a simons at techsoup.org. Um, thank Mike, you. thank you so much. Robert. Go ahead, Mike. Hi, can you hear me? Uh, yes, can you can. hear me, Aretha? So yes. I just want to respond to uh, the question about grants. So for the last three years, I was chief operating officer of an organization in Denver called Cross Purpose, faith based organization that built out of a church and then helps people move from poverty to uh, jobs and career training. I left that to start my own nonprofit and focused uh, first on grants and then donors. So I would just say this, is that we applied and got a food stamp grant. Those are available in every state through the United States Department of Agriculture. And I would say that, um, as one pastor said to me, Mike, this is the low hanging fruit of the Holy Spirit. So there's no reason that faith-based organizations shouldn't compete for government grants. You need to be careful about um, evangelism, but there is a lot of money and it's growing. And I started this because I believe that uh, there is a lot more money that the government has and they're looking for people to, honestly, they're, they're looking for people to give money to whom they trust who have a track record of doing this. And 33 people over the last year and a half came to faith, all from food stamps, because we got them connected to people who care, who are coaches who walked with them. And then we walked them through to opt in, opt in, if you get state money, opt in discipleship program. And we got them all plugged into churches in their neighborhood. Uh, so I would just say that's a huge opportunity for the faith-based community to um, connect with those people uh, in need. And I would have everybody, if you're looking for grants, it is complicated. It takes a long time, but uh, it's really worth it. And we balance our fundraising between grants and donors. And that uh, should give us a very stable uh, base of uh, support over the next couple of years. So uh, just check out SNAP. It's in every state. SNAP stands for Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. It's part of the United States Department of Agriculture. And there's a lot of money there in every single state. So please check that out. That was excellent. Thank you for sharing that, Mike. Thank you sure. so much. Go ahead, Jack, with your question or comment. Yes, thank you. Uh, my question is pretty simple. Uh, we're a small church, so we watch our pennies. We are looking for a calendar solution that would be available to the web and also be able to print it in a format that can be posted in our newsletter. We have in the past used My Church Events. It works really well. However, it is a fee to it. So unless TechSoup is able to get some discounts on that, currently we are using Google Calendar, which works great. However, it doesn't wrap around the text and printing is an issue. Okay. I'm, not, I'm not sure I understood. You, you say you're a church, but yeah, I'm not I'm, I'm rephrase that, the, the, you know. We're, we're was it a question or just a comment? I'm not sure. Well, I'm looking for a calendar solution. Oh, calendar. Okay. 
Um, you know, when you say a calendar of solution, that's not a content calendar. What does that mean, a calendar of solution? Of, of a, we're, we're looking for a calendar that would post our events in a public forum like the website mm -hmm. and also be able to print the calendar so that it can be included in our newsletter. Okay, I get it. I'm sorry. I can see the picture in my mind now. Um, anybody have any ideas? Because uh, I don't know right off the top of my head if we have that. Anybody have any ideas of where he can get something like that? Because I see in my mind now what you're talking about. Um, I'm sure somebody will put it in the chat room in a moment. If, what, what, did you have any other questions, um, Jack? No, I don't. Thank you. Okay. But yeah, but thanks for sharing that because I, I didn't think about that. That's inexpensive. That's a way to get you advertisement. So yeah, that, that's a great that's a great idea what you guys are doing. Okay, Deborah, can I mute yourself, please? Hey, thank you so much, Aretha. A, a great discussion and great group uh, to everyone. Um, Deb here in Houston, um, working with a variety of nonprofits and uh, you know, the idea of faith-based, uh, some individuals have that, that you know, they have this part of their passion, but is uh, the understanding of faith-based faith that you have to be affiliated with a congregation or a specific church or denomination. I'm just throwing that out there so that maybe everyone who's listening understands this category. Thank you so much, Aretha. Yeah, that's a great question. What do you guys say about that? Because you hear the word faith-based all the time and we were, we didn't want to call this pastor's chat. We wanted to say faith-based so we can include people who weren't pastors. Anybody have any comment about what um, Deborah just asked? Or, yeah, advice for her. This is Barry Walker for Boyer's Restoration. I'm not a uh, pastor ordained or anything else like that. Uh, and uh, we've started a nonprofit for long term housing of veterans. And it's a ministry to minister to them, but we're not we're not associated with a Baptist church or a Methodist church or anything like that. Faith based would mean uh, meet you as you are and 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 minister to them as you can. You don't have to be a church to do that. I love it. I love that. That's great. Anybody else have any um, thoughts on that comment? That, I love that, Barry. This is Michelle Larson in Boise, Idaho. We were a, like someone else said, um, a nonprofit. We were actually a program of a church for seven years, but we are Treasure Valley wide now which is the name of the valley here in, in Idaho. Um, we work with about 60 churches and um, we are no longer um, a program of a church for our own 501c3 as of last year, but we are faith-based. The reason we do what we do in serving refugees is because of our love of Christ. Wow, oh, okay. Thank you for sharing that. So the name doesn't say we are faith-based it sounds like it's a, a business serving the community and you don't have it, you know, in your logos or anything like that. You just know you are by, by the virtue of what you do. Is that correct? I see. It is in our mission and our vision statements, okay. but publicly on our web, it often just says we bring the community together instead of saying the faith-based community. Um, okay. But it does say it in our, in our founding documents in our articles of incorporation and things. Okay, great. Thank you for sharing that. Um, few, a few feed, feedback for you about the calendar. A lot of people saying they use the Google Calendar. Google Calendar works fine and can be printed. So um, that's, that's some feedback about the calendar. Lisa, go ahead with your comment. Feel free to unmute yourself. Um, I'm in the same position as Michelle. Um, my nonprofit is called All Things Possible. So anybody that's, you know, read scripture knows, you know, all things are possible with God only, you know, so we don't, we're not blatant about it. Um, however, on our website, you know, we, we do say, you know, we truly believe that with God, all things are possible and, you know, help us to make all things possible for disabled families, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and of course, our, our board of directors um, have to be Christians. Um, they um, and they know that from the get-go 
and it's in our bylaws and our mission statement and everything, but it's more behind the scenes than it is right up front. Um, we actually started out being called All Things Possible Ministries, and then we changed it because people were saying, well, if we're not a Christian, then you won't help us. And we were like, no, we're going to help anybody. But we're just hoping that, you know, in, in the helping part, we're planting seeds. Um, and, and, you know, when I hand people the keys to their new wheelchair van, I say to them, you know, God heard your prayers, you know, those kinds of things. So um, we're a little more low key about it, but, um, but it's, it's clear if, if you know any scripture of who we are and what we do. So I believe that you don't have to be affiliated with the church at all to be faith-based, and we're not. Thank you for sharing that. We just have one more comment with Janet, and then I'm going to stop the recording and allow you to go ahead and capture the, the chat room. Um, go ahead, Janice. Thank you for sharing that, um, Lisa. Janice, if you're speaking, you're on mute. I'm sorry. I, now, can you hear me? Yes. I don't have my video going, right? I don't have a good background. Um, I am the director of a um, faith-based counseling agency and we are not affiliated with any uh, particular church we were in fact founded by uh, four uh, pastors of different denominations um, and so um, one of the uh, we happen to be housed on the campus of a Presbyterian church, um, and they are one of our supporters. But we get supporters from uh, support from several different denominations. And I don't know if any of you know anything about the Dearborn, Michigan area. We have the highest um, Arab population outside of Arab countries, and we are strongly Muslim. And although we are founded by Christian, um, by uh, Christian organizations and our clients are predominantly Christian. We have worked with several clients from the Islamic community because they wanted to come to a counseling agency that respected their faith tradition. Um, we do not do any evangelizing or proselytizing. All of our counselors are licensed by the state of Michigan, and we meet people uh, where they are on their faith journey and how they want that involved um, in their counseling. So you don't have to be affiliated. We're a 501c3. You don't have to be affiliated with any one particular church. We happen to be housed on the campus of one of our founding uh, congregations, um, but that's how we do it. And we've been around for 37 years. Um, I posted wow. our um, website in the uh, chat. If anybody wants to look at the website, our email is on there. If you want to uh, email me, you can do that. I'd be happy to talk to anybody. Thank you so very much. And thank you all for being here. I want to say as you're taking care of everybody else, your community, your family, please make sure you take care of yourself. Make sure you sign up for the next webinars because James and his group is going to be our featured speaker. <laughs> and we'll see you next time.